Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. And I am back with Mark. Hey, how, how you doing? doing? I'm it's, doing great. It's good to be here. It's good to be here checking stuff out. And this doesn't look like motion at all. No? You know, I'm, I'm telling you, this it's, is a whole new It's the new, new motion. It's 4.1. Oh, wow, <laughs> it, it looks a lot. It looks a lot more 3D than I expected. Yeah. So, Cin- so this is this is Cinema 4D. This is Cinema 4D, and the reason we're in Cinema 4D is that the the latest release, version 11.5, uh-huh. now uh, fully supports uh, exporting data for motion. Really? Yeah. Well, and that's yeah. a that's a huge thing because a lot of times you end up with stuff that obviously you don't want to do in motion. You don't you don't want to try to make it all 3D in motion. It's just not built for that. And but you do want to make sure that the 2D elements that you have really integrate, right? Yep. Not only they integrate, it makes it easier to swap those 2D elements out in motion, right. and you don't have to go re-render a big 3D project. Exactly. So I thought I'd show a little bit about the, the basic workflow, because this is very exciting for folks that want to um, integrate more 3D into, mm-hmm. their, into their motion project workflow. And by the way, Cinema 4D is, is the best application for doing broadcast graphics. Like if, if this is the, yeah. for this kind of animation, uh, it's just really built for it. And this integration between motion and After Effects and everything else is, is just a really something that they focused a lot on. Yes, yes. And yeah. it's you mentioned After Effects. This is something that's been there for After Effects a while now. It's right. finally to motion. Very, very, <laughs> very happy about that. Awesome. So this is a simple um, 3D project. And actually, I can actually play it in Cinema 4D. Right. And it's utilizing a little bit of the new Mo Dynamics part of 11.5, which allows objects to integrate uh, interact with each other, and right. just have an animated video screen. And I'm going to yep. want something to appear on that video screen. And all you need to do in Cinema 4D is do what you normally do to build a project, right. and you just need to apply the compositing tags mm-hmm. uh, to the appropriate layer. So I have this screen here, and I've got both uh, a compositing tag and an external compositing tag. So now, what does the compositing tag do versus the external compositing sure. tag? Sure. So the compositing tag is going to help us with um, basically an alpha channel because okay. the screen, there's things in front of the screen, the screen animates on. Right. So we're going to want to, that video is going to want to be masked. Right. And that's going to help. That's what this, we're going to have an, what's called an object buffer right. assigned based on this compositing tag that we see, object buffer one. Got it. The, uh, the external compositing tag, on the other hand, is what will tell motion where the screen lives in 3D space. Got it'll it. it'll position. It'll basically put a little null object in. So you, you need to put those two things on, and then in your when you set up the render, um, we can see there's this object buffer here. So that's right. what that little uh, mask is basically going to be. Mm-hmm. And then if we look under the save options in this compositing project file, there's a target application of motion. Right now that's been there in this pop-up menu. You can see there's other options here as well. Motion has been there, but what hasn't been there. The big difference here, right. and the, the big thing I'm excited about is include 3D data. Because before, you could, you could export passes. So you could give right. a whole bunch of passes or a whole bunch of renders or whatever and have them all come out, and they all come in as a project in motion. Yes. But without the 3D, it was limited. Yeah, you can't match. Because what this will do is export the 3D camera right. position, its animation, as well as the lights. Will it, so you when can work it, with if, it. if that object's moving, will it, is it animating that null as well? The, 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 the null will be animated, yeah. All that data is going to come out. So um, that's basically all you need to do is set it up. And it creates a motion project for you. Right. And this is what the motion project looks like at first. It right. needs a little bit of work to, to sort of set it up. Right. Okay. So this little question mark here, that's that null object of, of the screen location mm-hmm. that came from Cinema 4D. And then here's our actual movie. Uh, if I just play through it, we can see this is the rendered movie. And there's, right. there's nothing in that screen right now, right? Right. So I'll, I'll stop it somewhere where we can see the screen. The first thing we need to do is this little screen needs to be in a 3D group. Right. Okay, so I'm going to create a new 3D group and drag the screen into it. And now if I go grab an object to put in that screen, um, I can just go ahead and grab, say, this surf movie and drag it on there to swap it out. And then that surf movie appears in there. Right. And in exactly the right location. And I'll just, I'll just scale it up a little bit there. Um, now the problem is right now, it's in the right location. But it's over top of everything. It's over top of everything, right? right. So. Um, what we need to do now is add that mask. Right. And we have that mask right in here. It's one of the objects that was rendered out of Cinema 4D. And this is when you set up that object buffer. It gave you that. It gave me this movie. Okay. So I'm going to bring that into the 2D group. And the thing that's a little hard to, for me to wrap my mind around is all the, the, the QuickTime movies that are rendered out have to go in 2D groups because we don't right. want them affected by the camera. Right. Because the camera's kind of been baked into them already. Right. 
So now what I'll just do is I'll take our screen, our picture of our surfer here, and I'll choose Object Add Image Mask. And then I'll drag on our little um, mask. And actually, you can see what that mask looks like right here. I should have played that. That This, this is what that mask looks like. It's right. a black and white mask. So then I need to, in the heads-up display, set that image mask, rather than alpha, to Luma. Right. So it's using the brightness levels to determine so whatever's what whatever's white, it's going to let through. Whatever's black, it's going to mat out. Mat out, yeah. So now that video screen that. shows up perfectly within a 3D project. That's, That's very fantastic. Simple 3D project. But what's cool about this is now if I want to change the video that shows up in there, it's just a matter of dragging yep. another video on top, and it's done. And especially if you're doing something like this weekend or, or whatever, you know, that, that, that's a perfect example of you're going to do like 50 of these. Right. You know, and, and, you, and you want to run them all through, and you don't want to sit there and rendering them all out one at a time out of cinema would be all weekend. Right. This is going to be, uh, you know, the afternoon or, or Min less. Yeah, minutes for each one versus hours for, for the render. It makes it very easy to swap it out. Plus, I didn't have do it. I have a question for sure. you. I'm going to throw a curve at you. So <laughs> okay. this, is, this, is, this is always a scary thing. It, 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 with using the uh, what motion does with XML and so on and so forth, theoretically, you could write a script to just swap them out. Possibly. Possibly, you could do that. I'm yeah. just thinking yeah. on the fly there, you know. And Mark's like, uh, no yeah. one, no one warned me. I, I don't immediately see how to do like a, an automator or a services thing to do that. But if, if you had a script, then you could no, like an in. external script okay. that, that would just grab it and basically and say, swap it out because it's it's saying I'm looking for this uh, yep. this image and just simply say, no, now you're looking for this one. No, now you're looking for this one. No, now you're looking for this one, and just keep on rendering. Just like the product auto motion does, where it swaps exactly. out project files, so it uses the same because that product does it. It would definitely be a doable thing. Say, yeah. hey, point to a folder of ten videos and yep. give me 10, render out 10 motion projects and yep. you're done, yeah. Plus the light data comes in. So I didn't do it here, but if you right. have multiple lights in your scene, those lights get translated into motions lights. So they, 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 when they come in, they're actually motions lights. They'll be mo motions lights will be in the scene at the correct huh. position and wow. orientation of the same ones in cinema and the correct coloring, wow. and you can adjust the brightness. Now, the lights don't map exactly the same. There's a right. little, because there's more controls in cinema, but what it lets you do is modify your scene in motion and deal with the light and make it darker, or brighter, or slightly right. different hue without needing to go back to, yeah. to no, the 3D it, application. It, and and the, the iteration rate is so much faster in motion than you're going to have in a 3D, any right. 3D application, right. uh, that it really makes sense if everything else is going to remain mostly the same. Yeah. So, so to, to me, this is huge because I can do yeah. some stuff so fast in motion and combining it with 3D will now, I think we'll see a lot more true 3D stuff coming uh, through yeah. a motion pipeline. Fantastic. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Where can people find more of this kind of stuff from you? Uh, RippleTraining.com is I have a full-blown training on motion and in detail about how to use Motion 4 to do just about anything you want to do. Awesome. Thank you very much. You bet. And thank you for watching Mac Break Studio.